Big development Tuesday night. Final score, Providence 72, Marquette 57. Devin Carter got 22 points, eight rebounds, four assists. Marquette only shot 31.1% from the field, 20% from three. Ain't going to win many road games doing that. Dead leg, did you learn more about Marquette of Providence last night? To me, it's Providence. Uh, that was, uh, you know, the moment of arrival for the Kim English era. Uh, I mean, 10-2, and two, Friars had had some nice wins. They had, you know, they they completely uh, kept Wisconsin out of it early on in the season, and I, and I watched that game. Uh, but other than that, uh, not a ton. Uh, they played uh, a heartbreaker against Kansas State. Um, down in where was that game? I watched that game. I think that was in the Bahamas. Um, every game was then, in the Bahamas. Yeah, I know. And then, uh, and then they were non-competitive. I didn't see the game because I was at Jimmy V. But they were non-competitive against Oklahoma earlier this month. But ten and two right now. And yeah, to me, it is it is about the Friars who got their biggest win over a top ten team by margin in almost thirteen years. And the thing that stuck out to me you know it's also important you know they get off to a good start they're now you know technically for now they're ahead of marquette in the biggie standings that stuff uh that stuff matters early on but marquette had an off night from shooting and i thought province was a lot of that marquette only hit four three-pointers it was four of 20 from three-point range and marquette if you look at what it's been under shaka it typically not never but typically when it loses it does not get blown out and it was blown out this game had a weird ending with like elongated reviews and frankly in real time the game finished about 10 minutes later than it should have um so that i almost feel like that stymied a little bit of uh the vibes inside the dunk there which nonetheless were, were terrific um but yeah to me it was this was about providence fox had a note afterward that i was unaware of but this is this is a heck of a stat in the past three seasons pc has more home wins than any team in the sport gp it's at last night was number 40 and then right behind them texas is at 39 arizona and kentucky each a piece have 38 home victories, but that is a house of horrors for Marquette. Uh, at least it has been of late. The, the program has lost five straight against the Friars in that building, and PC was able to snap a Marquette program record of nine straight wins against Big East opponents. Uh, so to me, it said more about Kim English, Providence's viability as a top half of the Big East uh, program this season, and getting it done and doing it in a way that Marquette is not normally accustomed to. Uh, my only other takeaway is in watching the game, when you get in even to the, you know, Devin Carter is just a dude. He he <laughs> he is ready to play against anyone at any time. But like Garway Duel showing uh, plenty of promise and flash as a freshman. He had a great dish uh, late. Fanta was on the call. He did a great job on the mic there. Uh, to me, this program still has, and a lot of this is that fan base, which is one of the best in the league, one of the best in the country. Uh, it has the same kind of edge. It has the energy that it had under Cooley. Uh, I think Kim coaches with a real edge. He's got players who are unafraid. They are willing and wanting to lean on each other. And I think a lot of that starts with Devin Carter. I, it's not a flawless roster, but they have a lot of good pieces. And understandably, going into the season, it was just kind of like, all right, we'll see on Providence. Like, yeah, they, were not, they weren't picked at the bottom of the league, but no one was quite sure if this would be a tournament team, maybe a bubble team, would it be in the NIT? It's obviously right now tracking to be in the tournament, although it has not yet gotten it done in large part away from home. Nevertheless, I like what I'm seeing. PC, you got yourself a squad. That was an awesome win. What were your thoughts? What was your takeaway? Was it more about Providence to you or, or Marquette kind of coming up uh, way short in its first you know, big road test of the season? Spirit of transparency, I was flying last night. Um, no TV on the plane, so I'm limited to streaming one thing. Needless to say, I streamed the Josh show. <laughs> yeah, the, not not even the other team from Memphis, though, by the way. It was a huge night for Memphis, yes. It's a wild night in Memphis. Right? And to, be, to be fair, a reminder to our audience, GP does have a daily two-hour show, uh, and he is employed by that NBA franchise. So, so yeah, I, was watching the, I was watching the Josh show, especially after the Tigers seem to have Virginia under uh, control. And then you get into those weird windows where, um, you know, uh, you're landing, and so now you no longer have the Wi-Fi, and you're waiting to get the – cellular service and is a you don't want to be flying on a tooth on you know what my original flight was like 11 50 delayed 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 um then took off i think maybe three minutes after the grizzlies game started or something like that i watched some of the tigers game in the airport it was a mess it was a it was a bad night to be flying but um so i didn't see i, I I've, I've read everything i know the box score yeah. i can't talk about the details of the game but I can't talk about what's happening at Providence right now. And Kim like came in and 
very smart in the sense that um, the priority was, I've got a good thing. I just got to keep it here. How do I keep these guys here? And he was able to to keep important pieces as a part of the program, as opposed to watch them enter the transfer portal, which is what typically happens in a coaching change. He was very good at coming in and establishing relationships just like that and doing whatever needed to get done to, to make sure that those players remained on campus. And then to your point about the way that building looks, the way that fan base is rallied around Kim, rallied around this team, it reminds me, and I'm not just going to keep circling things back to Memphis, I promise, but it, it reminds me a lot of how Memphis fans rallied around Josh Pastor. Memphis fans, at the, at the very beginning, like by the end, they wanted, they wanted Josh Pastor to go to Georgia Tech, but at the beginning, they wanted to rally around this guy, mostly because they wanted to prove they're bigger than the guy who just left them. That was a real thing that hurt to have John Calipari for nine years at Memphis tell the entire world every time anybody would ask you don't need to be in a power conference to 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 do anything in this sport I can have the number one pick I can go to the final four I can win a national championship I can get on national television the only league that matters is the NBA no league in college basketball matters I can build everything from here and then as soon as Kentucky offers him the job he crawls there understandably I would have too but that hurt that fan base. And you go back and look at Josh Pastner's first Midnight Madness or Memphis Madness. It was 18,000 people. They wanted to prove not only to the country or to John Calipari, but to themselves, we are bigger than the coach who just told us he don't want to coach us anymore. And I really do think Providence fans, I bet you they would tell you they want to do the same thing. They want to see Kim English succeed, of course, because he's Providence coach. And you want to see any Providence coach succeed. But they want to prove they're bigger than the guy who who just left them. And uh, at least through the early part of the season, they're doing a pretty good job. Real quick refresher on the Marquette resume. If uh, if you're listening, you don't uh, have it at the front of your mind here. Marquette's nine and three right now. The losses, it had that really good matchup against Purdue, obviously in Maui. It lost there. It lost against Wisconsin. I think I might've misspoke earlier. And so this is uh, Marquette's first true road test. I meant in the big East, um, but it uh, Wisconsin, that was a definitive loss for Marquette here. And then Providence. So the wins are counterbalanced by winning at Illinois, beating Kansas, beating Texas, uh, and then a win over UCLA, which means nothing right now. We'll get to that shortly. Um, But it's going to turn around. It's got Georgetown at home in a couple of days, and then it gets Creighton at home on December 30th. That'll be a really awesome matchup and a really good uh, opportunity there. for. I'm definitely still in on Marquette, obviously. Uh, The loss here isn't stunning by any means, uh, but... You know, they shut down Oso Igadaro did Providence. I thought that was pretty, pretty notable there uh, for what, you know, expectations would have been. Kolek had a good game. Cam Jones was all right. Uh, Ross and Joplin and the bench really didn't produce a ton, but they walked into a hornet's nest and Providence was was waiting, ready and waiting. And uh, and some, you know, some nice little intrigue to start the Big East uh, slate, which obviously began in earnest this week.